sponsored by Dasani, but Dasani Station sounds like a pretty, pretty awesome map. It's, look at how cold it is. It is very cold. It is basically Canada. Oh, yeah, it is. You might mm. say that whoever wins this could become the king of the north. You might say that. Uh, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. Whoever wins on king of the north station. Oh. King Sejong station, king of the north station. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting down here at the bottom right-ish corner of the map, top of the blue Terran player. Give it up for Poke Bunny. And spawning up in the top left-ish, middle-ish position <laughs> from Team Root. It is the player up 1-0 looking to close it out. Give it up for Kelazur. <laughs> Going for that gas first again, as is Poke Bunny. Not a big surprise. Uh, such a short rush distance, you really want to get, you know, factory units out as quickly as possible. <laughs> you know, the really cool thing about Poke Bunny is even Kelazur actually is... Honestly, given Poke Bunny, I think, more credit than Poke Bunny gives himself sometimes. Because they're saying, you know, Poke Bunny is actually this really good underdog. He has really, really fantastic control. He throws out all kinds of really weird and kind of creative-ish builds at his opponents. That's actually how he took out True to qualify for King of the Kings of the North. And I feel like Dissant Station is one of those maps that if you're going to come up with a weird or wonky build to throw it at your opponent, this would be one of the maps you do something like that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, to speak to the creativity you were talking about, so the standard right now has been that 2-1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. uh, Poke Bunny went with a slightly quicker timing. It's it's a 3-1-1 one, one where you get a third Rax and you hit just a little bit earlier. And uh, mm. you're kind of hitting a stim timing maybe about 20 seconds earlier. And then your medevacs join the fight after you've stimmed. And then they're rehealing. But you just walk across the map with it. And he did this on Frozen. And that was actually, he caught... Uh, he caught True over droning mm -hmm. at just this kind of awkward off timing, and he won the game off the back of that, and that was what was able to complete the 2-0. Mm -hmm. uh, so right off the bat, we see, speaking of aggression, it's actually Kelazur walking a lone marine <laughs> very boldly. Look at him, look at him there. His, his strides are huge. I mean, we said that Kelazur was fearless, but little did we know every single unit he has is fearless. He can take on the entire Terran army, and uh, there was a reactor built, so un funnily enough, this marine this, might actually be yeah. able to focus fire down a worker before or the two marines pop for Poke Bunny. Oh, Poke Bunny's probably scratching his head. Pulling back, and Kelazur <laughs> goes home with it. That's amazing. Oh, no, he's not. What is he doing? Uh-oh. I think he's going to sacrifice it. He's oh, weak enough some kill. of these Can workers. Can get that one low oh. SCV? He might go for it. He might go for the oh, stutters up. Arrest. SCV is being pulled. Oh, oh, and it goes down. But Kelazur mm. getting, actually, I'd say a lot of value with that marine. He got a yeah. full scout. He uh, denied some mining time. Mm -hmm. He bruised up some SCVs for a potential future attack. That was, uh, that was pretty nifty. You know what I think the most Zor. valuable thing about that was? Is that it made Poke Bunny go, what the heck is this guy doing? Like, nobody does this. Who, yeah. d who just sends one Marine out across the map after you've already SCV scouted and just starts attacking random SCVs? Like, that's such a weird thing to do, but it's going to get in his head. That's one of the things that you're like, okay, this guy literally will do anything. Yeah, and he literally will do anything. He literally did anything right there. <laughs> Medivacs are going to be coming out pretty soon. The Marines are moving across the map, and I imagine that the tank evac micro is going to be so unbelievably important moving into this. But, of course, both these players sitting on those one base economies, they know Dasan Station is not a map to be trifled with. You do not want to be the first one to try and go for an expansion and realize you don't have enough units to defend. Certainly not. And we do have a Cyclone coming out from Telezor. That's going to make this actually a little difficult. Oh, wow. Dodges the Widow Mine shot. Does poke funny. Nice pickup. And he's going to be able to break the front door here. Kelazur with the barracks at the front does mean that he will end up potentially losing that after the supply depot gets knocked down. Guess what? The oh. reactor is likely going to be a soon to be a targeted down unit. But for me, he down. actually broke the lock on on that uh, medevac and he just barely kept it alive. So he's going to be able to reposition. But this Widow Mine's coming off cooldown. He needs to pick that tank oh. up. Tank oh, survived one shot. shot. It's going to be weakened up, and that's going to be a really, really big target right now for Kellos over. The medevac is keeping it alive. Oh, SCVs killing it off, and he's going to be able to force Poke Bunny back, but he did end up losing quite a few workers. He's now sitting down about six workers. Oh, and a oh, shot. Poke Bunny's making it work right now. The Siege Tank does get taken out by the Cyclone, though, and it seems like that Cyclone is going to be saving grace. Kelazor manages to hold, but he loses a lot in the process. He does lose a lot, but if we look at the workers tab, he's now down five workers. Really nice attack for Poke Bunny. But if he had not taken that Widow Mine shot, I think that would have done even more damage. Like probably another mm -hmm. five or six, maybe even ten SCVs go down. Uh, we do see Kelizer though. He's uh, 
He's shifted into gear. He's going to be pushing across with just this single cyclone. Does does realize, you know, actually maybe there's tanks back there. I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna chill with this. But yeah. right now we're at a bit of a lull after some pretty intense micro right there. Really nice pickup micro on the Viking at the very end from Kelazor. Yeah. Uh, poke bunny throughout though. Oh, we do Ooh. see the tank getting kind of oh. a little awkward. What are you doing? Oh, Kelazor tries to get a bit over eager over there, and now we have a medevac that's loaded up the siege tank. Poke bunny now being a bit over eager. Oh, the Viking is going to take it out. out the tank of back. And Kelazor no longer actually going to be able to save that other siege tank. They're just trading units left and right, but it seems like Poke Bunny just has a few more units all clumped together. It's going to give him a nice advantage. He does. I'd love to see him repair that tank right up. This is. This feels like ZVZ right there, right now. It feels like a knife fight. Like they're just jabbing at each other. And this, as much, as much fun as it is, this is why we don't really see Dasan Station so much. It's so unpredictable. It's un unstable. Yes, unstable. But here's the thing. We began all of those second series of trades with Kelazor sitting up an army supply. Now Kelazor is behind an army supply, but he's been able to catch up in worker supply, still making workers, and very soon he's actually going to be overtaking Poke Bunny, especially if this damage over here is not able to do something. Poke Bunny trying to move in, kills off a supply depot, not going to supply block anything, but, well, he's going to be chased around. That's still value if he can get those Marines out, um, which it looks like... He should be able to. Be, he did use his boost, so he's got to oh. be careful of that Viking. Poke Bunny actually going to use oh. this distraction because even though these Marines are all going to get taken out, even the Medevac will get taken out. There is a push across the map, and Kelazor is going to be out of position. He only has a few units over here, and Poke Bunny may be able to stem forward and move in. Uh, he is going to try and take the advantage of the Sea Shank fight. Oh, it looks like Kelazor did target fire that tank, but a little bit too late. And as a result, Kelazor oh. is going to lose the front just a little bit. He's rushing back to defend it. Drops the tank. That's going to get a nice shot on uh, the tank of Poke Bunny. Mm. But Kelazor, once again, with the barracks at the front, is going to have a vulnerable target. That's his production. That's his lifeline to keep alive in this game for sustainable defense. But with that barracks, going to oh, very, very soon be going down. Oh, got to be so careful. He needs to take the advantage in this fight. Uh, those Vikings helping out so oh. much, forcing back that tank back. Oh, he doesn't oh my drop, God. he loses a tank. Oh, and another one getting really low. And if he loses that other medevac, he's not going to have the high ground vision anymore. He cannot take fights uphill. And it seems like Poke Bunny knows that he's going to be backing up. Marines moving back home. And I want to note, even though Kelazor had a SCV over at his Natural Expansion Command Center, he made it look like he was going to be taking an expansion. And in fact, Poke Bunny might think that Kelazor has been taking an expansion. But there is no expansion down for Kelazur. He is not looking to do that. He is looking to just continue to make units and power across the map. That tank was in such a good position right there. Got two really big shots on the clump of Marines. And Kelazur has a bit of an army supply lead. Taking down one of the oh. medevacs really nice. And the other one All goes of the down. medevacs. There is no micro capability for these siege tanks anymore for Poke Bunny. That's a huge problem. He might have three siege tanks, but what does oh. it matter if you do not have the vision for your opponent? This ramp is so painful. Oh. He needs to pick up the tank. Doesn't get it. Oh, wow. And now there's no tanks on the front for Kelazur. Still with that Viking advantage, so he's going to go hunting. Mm. But the medevac is not going to pop out. Yeah, I think the most important thing is he's actually going to try and go for some scouting information at that natural